This is a view from the bunker. Now, here's Derek Gilbert. It's been two years since we've been together as a body, but we are coming back together in Dallas in just a matter of weeks. Welcome to a view from the bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. Joining us is... uh, the uh, co-founder of Hear the Watchman Ministries. They've been responsible for putting together some just amazing conference gatherings all over the country for the past five, well, yes, five, six years. But uh, anyway, Sharon and I are honored to call them friends, and we are honored to welcome back to the program Mike Kerr. Mike, thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, thank you, Derek. I mean, it, you know, it's kind of interesting. After all the time we've worked together, we've done lots of stuff on Skywatch. This is the first time I've ever been on View from the Bunker. I'm excited. Wow. Yeah, you know what? You're right. It's uh, I had not even <laughs> hadn't even thought about that, but you're right. It's a <laughs> over, long time. It's overdue, actually. Now, here the Watchmen, uh, the last time there was an official here, the, well, except for San Diego last year, but it's been two years since we've been back to Dallas, and Dallas has been sort of like the... Uh, uh, I guess you'd call it the flagship uh, gathering every year. And uh, we were getting together just before things really locked down back in 2020. Um, I remember a lot of people getting kind of nervous about that. And uh, we were there and shaking hands and hugging people just like uh, usual. But uh, yeah, it was kind of odd. It, it's almost like we got one that one last gathering in before things really locked down. It's hard to remember what life was like before for that date. It, well, it is, Derek. You know, and it, it's been two years too long. We did San Diego. That was a very localized California-type conference. We did have people who came in from out of state. But, you know, people at that time, it was last September, uh, uh, they were scared. You know, they, they were scared to travel. It's nice to see now that we see mandates dropping across the country. I, I read this morning... Uh, uh, that uh, New Jersey is going to drop all their uh, mask requirements for children at school beginning in March. I think acro- all all across the nation, not only the nation, but the world itself, we're seeing these mandates start to fall up. The COVID numbers are dropping. It's time, folks, to get back out there and live your life. And part of that for us as Christians, we need to gather again and get together and have that one-on-one exchange with with uh, each other. That's what it's all about. Yeah. So the gathering is uh, March 17th through 20th at the uh, Hilton DFW Lakes Conference Center. Jamie Walden, Pastor Paul Begley, L.A. Marzulli, Coach Dave, Tom Dunn, Dave Hodges of the Common Sense Show, our good friend Dr. Michael Lake will be there as well. Um, Ohio Brett, John and Chelsea Jubilee, and uh, Clay Clark, checking in by video. So quite a collection of, of speakers that uh, you've pulled together. What's been the response since you uh, put out the notice that uh, this was going to take place, that we were actually getting back together again? Are, are we seeing people ready to um, ready to travel, ready to gather in large groups again? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the response was overwhelming. I mean, people have been asking us to come back every year uh, for the past two years to Dallas, and we tried but we just couldn't make it work. And now we're able to make it work uh, and people are are responding well. A lot of people are still waiting like, oh, well, I'm just gonna wait to see what happens with this or what happens with that. And we encourage you to just put that aside. Jamie Walden like laid it out one night on one of our Zoom fellowship calls that you you have to You'll spend the money on getting a TV set. You'll spend the money on on getting a new drone or or some other stuff that you don't really need. But you're trepidatious about spending the money to go hear the word of the Lord. Don't do that. Get out there and get active and and be a part of the remnant body. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. We're going to talk about how to survive 2022 from both a biblical and practical standpoint, and what you can do to get out there and to actually serve the body. You know, Derek, it's funny. Uh, I talk to people all day long, and you know, we do these Zoom fellowship calls on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings, where we've talked to thousands of people, and they say, "Well, you know, I I I really want to serve Christ. That's why I watch all these YouTubes with you guys." And it's like, wait a minute. Watching a YouTube video and learning is one thing. It's part of the equation. But if you don't take that knowledge and get out there 
and actually be boots on the ground working in your community, then it's a waste. You know what they say about faith without works, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, so, you know, that's what we try to encourage people to do. And we have a wonderful lineup. We have a special speaker's luncheon that you can go to. But here's the thing about a Hear the Watchman Caucus. You, when you come to one, actually get to have a conversation with the likes of Derek Gilbert, Dr. Michael Lake, L.A. Marzulli, one-on-one. -on -one. They're all of us are completely accessible to you to talk and try and guide you or just just have a fun conversation. It's just, I don't know, Derek, how would you describe that experience at a conference? It's uh, really the reason that Sharon and I enjoy these conferences. Uh, going and speaking is one thing, but when you get together with other folks and you have an opportunity to um, talk and share and answer questions, we find that a lot of the ministering that uh, we do, and I still think it's kind of strange to use that word in conjunction with myself, but a lot of the, uh, I think the benefit for people there is uh, talking at the uh, the tables, talking over that uh, speaker's lunch, and just being able to uh, fellowship. Uh, we're blessed here at Skywatch TV in that we work in this environment every day. You know, I work with some really bright thinkers like, uh, you know, Joe Horn, Drew Graffia, Joshua Dorland, who's just joined our team. Um, all of them deep thinkers. And of course, we've got Allie Henson and Donna Howell on the staff. Uh, of course, I'm married to the smartest person I know, uh, Sharon. So every day I get to have these kind of conversations. You know, this is for me, this is like breakfast, lunch and, and dinner. But a lot of people are not in that uh, situation. They're not they're not so blessed. And so getting uh, they, they don't find a, a church body near them with with the kind of uh, uh conversation, the kind of depth of, of, and I'm not trying to take anything away from pastors who've got full place. I mean, we've been good friends with a couple of pastors over the last few years, and I've seen the kind of demands on their time mm -hmm. that they have, and they don't have the time to invest in the the, the studies that, that uh, like L.A. Marzulli will do, or the kind of really dark spiritual warfare that Tom Dunn has seen firsthand, working for many years with Russ Isdar. Uh, or to do, go hands-on in, in setting up a, a Christian refuge like Jamie Walden is doing out there at Camp Calico in uh, the Four Corners area. Or, you know, the type of research that uh, Sharon and I do, that uh, Dr. Michael Lake does, uh, you know, the kind of hands-on work that Coach Dave does when he goes out to areas in need and brings the boots on the ground for uh, areas that have been hit by uh, disasters. You know, you, you don't always have that kind of time when you're a, a pastor in a church. So we're not trying to take anything away from pastors or say that we're trying to replace the local church, but there are people in our, in our churches who want a deeper dive into the Word, and uh, conferences like the uh, events that you and Jeannie put together are places where people can get that and finally and, and, and be reassured that they're not alone, that they are not the only ones who see that there is... Um, more in the Word of God than uh, very often they're hearing in their in their churches. And again, it's not because their pastors are trying to dumb things down, but it's often because they just don't have the time to do the deep dive study that uh, that we are blessed to do. I mean, so somebody asked me once, uh, you know, not not long ago, you know, what, if you could define. De de Design your perfect job. What would it be? It's like, it's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? That's, it's not going to get us rich, but it's no, it re but, the rewards are amazing. Right. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. We started Hear the Watchman in 2015 and held our first conference at the Hilton DFW Lakes Executive Conference Center and Hotel. A long, that's a mouthful right there. Uh, it, I'm just going to call it the Hilton DFW. Uh, and, and you know, we've come all this way now. Uh, we've, I think we've baptized well over 1,500 people uh, in the course of the journey. It's been an amazing journey. But when I look back, I'm always touched by two stories. One is Mark Sutherland, who you know, who was... Mm -hmm. Who's became a? He's a. He lives in the UK, and he's become a, a a really deep researcher and coming up with some great information on what's happening over there. Uh, he came to the first conference because he thought he was going out of his mind because he would talk about all the things we talk about to his friends, 
and they would tell him he was nuts. And he felt all alone. And he came to the conference, and he was in awe that he could he could walk around and talk to people about this stuff. And they talked with him intelligently about what was going on. And nobody thought he was nuts. And now he has friends and family. He speaks at conferences here. Uh, it's just amazing. It's mm -hmm. just amazing. And then the other story, there was a kid. Well, not so much a kid. Um, I think it was maybe in his 30s at the time who came to one of the conferences and sat in his hotel room most of the time doing drugs. And he managed to come down on Sunday to get baptized. And uh, uh, Pastor Paul Bagley baptized him. And uh, I got a praise report from him after two years. He had, he had completely gotten off drugs. He'd gotten his family back together. He was ministering in the prisons in Texas, hmm. uh, and and just amazing. And and he's just going strong now. We've had people get married and divorced at our conferences, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know we've had people come that uh, suddenly a family started to arrive. So it's been a real blessing. But the 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 real thing, Derek, is that if we look at the dynamics of the last two years, they, and we all know who they are, have tried to divide us and they've tried to frighten us. And you know, that's one of my big pet peeves. People say, I'm totally of faith, but I'm afraid. Well, sorry, you can't have faith and fear mm -hmm. at the same time. It doesn't work. It's, it's an oxymoron, you know? And so uh, it's good to see people join together in faith you know, so that they come together and they meet one another and they develop a network of friends, not only across the country, but internationally as well. Uh, so, you know, but this is, you know, we have to take a look in America today, in my opinion, at where do we go from here? How do we move forward? Because you look at the news every day, there's some new disaster, you know, the Ukraine and oh, you know, you've got You've got uh, who knows what Elon Musk is doing. Right? Who knows what Bill Gates is doing? You know, oh, you know, we've got some new variant that they're talking about that might come out. You know, it's time for us to just put all that aside and have faith and go back to living our lives. Largely, the remnant body of Christ has been severely divided by all of this mess over the last two years. There are two factions, the ones that took the medicine and the ones who didn't. And you know what I'm speaking of. Sure. And, and the thing about all that is that w I saw, I witnessed it on our Zoom calls. We had brothers turning on brothers and just getting nasty over their position. And, you know, I finally told the people on our Zoom fellowships, like, that's it. I don't want to hear another word about this or I'll turn the fellowship off. You know, it just was time to pull people together. And that's the essence of what Eyes to See is all about. We want to open your eyes up to look forward and understand how you can serve the Lord, protect yourself, and get back to living a good Christian life. Um, I'm very excited that Tom Dunn is going to be there because Tom has some big shoes to fill. Uh, Tom was... Uh, Russ Dizdar's right-hand guy, mm -hmm. and we have set it up. Tom will speak, but Tom also is going to have a deliverance room where you can go in and you can talk about the things that the enemy is doing to you, and he and some other folks will pray with you and help you away from the main body of the conference so you have some privacy and some time to, to take a look at where you are in your life and what we're going to do to make it better next year. Yeah, this is a really interesting gathering of uh, viewpoints because you've got uh, uh, researchers into the weird aspects of the Bible like uh, like me and L.A. Marzulli talking about, uh, well, you know, the, the Nephilim, the UFO phenomenon, stuff like that. I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about yet. Probably uh, a little both. But uh, then you've got the hands-on practical aspect uh, like uh, Coach Dave and uh, Jamie Walden. And, you know, I, I still just love Coach Dave and his, and his spirit, you know, telling the story about his uh, offensive lineman, Leonard. You know, <laughs> Leonard, just hit somebody. Uh, just get out there and do something. 
Uh, and then, you, you know, the, the spiritual warfare aspect, which is really where this all meets the road with Tom Dunn, Pastor Paul Begley, and, uh, at, you know, Dave Hodges with his uh, insight into the, I, I guess you'd call it theopolitical realm, because what we see in the news each day is just a reflection, just shadows on the wall of the real conflict that's taking place, which, of course, is in the spirit realm. So a, a biblical and practical gathering, that's a really, a, a really good way of categorizing a, a Hear the Watchman uh, fellowship. Right? We hear the Watchmen gathering. Now, the last couple of years, you, you've launched the Zoom calls as a way of bringing people together, which really is what this is all about. It's not about getting people together. As you say, this is not a calling that uh, will uh, will uh, b- fill up your retirement account. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what? what uh, how have these, these calls developed over time? And what do you think people are taking away from these Zoom fellowships? You know, the Zoom Fellowship, I got to tell you, Derek, I did not want to do it. Jeannie suggested that we do it. And I said, you know, I do not want to be tied down three nights a week to do these. I mean, people people think, oh, it's so much fun what you do. Yeah, it's fun. But when you do Zoom calls, no matter where you are in the country or what's going on in your life, you you got to try and show up and make the call happen. Right. And so they have developed uh, now to, I look forward to them each week. And, and we have uh, quite a few people there. And what they're taking away from it is they're breaking strongholds because they're listening to people like you uh, who are become a guest on Tuesday nights. And then we have Q and a afterwards And they learn things and they take those. And I get messages back to them like, oh, thank you so much. I'd never looked at it that way. I'm going to do this, this and this, you know. And we have a a wide variety of speakers. You know, sometimes it's a testimony. Sometimes it's education. Sometimes it's just pure fellowship. That's on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Central Time. And for all of these, if you guys want to be a part of it, all you have to do is go to hearthewatchmenmen.com, click the contact button in the subject line, say, I want to be invited, and I'll send you out a Zoom link. There's no charge for it. Uh, and you, you can just come on, and, and you don't even have to say anything if you don't want to. You can just listen and, and be fed. On Wednesday nights, we do an hour earlier, so at uh, 6 p.m. Central, we do a thing called Warfare Wednesday, where Sheila Glidden and Jeannie talk about spiritual warfare and how to protect yourself against the powers of darkness and your family. Uh, so that's really good. Starts an hour earlier. Then on Thursday nights, we started uh, something called We Are Two, which is basically a worship service. So we have some uh, worship service leaders who happen to be moving up here into the mountains of Idaho near us. Uh, Wednesday, I think they moved. So so they've been a little out of pocket with all their equipment packed up. Uh, But we'll have somebody come in and preach. This Thursday, Jamie Walden is going to preach. And he picks some scripture, and he goes with it. And we talk about it, and we talk about how it applies to today's world and what's happening out there. So the message... When I started Hear the Watchman, the reason I started Hear the Watchman was I clearly heard an audible voice one evening that said, gather my people. And that was it. I mean, it would have been nice if if he had said to me, gather my people and here's how you do it. You know, but that's (laughs) not that's not how that's not how God works. Yeah. You know, so we've tried. We had to kind of punt when the whole covid thing came in. And that's when we started the Zoom fellowship calls, and they have grown exponentially. Uh, and it's it's just a, it's a nice way in the evening for for you to tune in and hear some people talk about different topics and share. And we pray, and and people can talk about what their problem is that they're having in their life, and we'll pray for them. Um, not at all as good as being in person and sitting down face to face, but the next best thing for sure. Yeah, for a lot of folks, uh, travel uh, is not uh, possible, not recommended uh, even, but uh, this is a way of uh, getting around all of that. And uh, had it not been for COVID, you uh, may well uh, have never given this a try at all. No, might not have, you know. I mean, it's 
it's been fun, and sometimes it pr it provides uh, technical challenges. <laughs> if you if you guys want to see some of the past Zoom meetings and the and and what goes on, if you just go to our YouTube channel, which is real simple, just Google "Hear the Watchman YouTube" and it'll come right up. You can see like I record like the speakers, like Derek and and Jamie and uh, some other people. You can you can take a look and see what you what what's there before you. Uh, commit to, to yourself to join. But, you know, it's it's really interesting. Uh, Dave Hodges. So Dave Hodges, uh, I talked to him about it when we were in San Diego. And he said, well, that sounds kind of interesting. And so I forget, oh, I had Jamie on last week and he tuned in and and he's like crazy about it now. He's, he's like, uh, you know, he, he he's totally into him. He's actually our guest uh, on Tuesday night. He'll be on uh, next Tuesday's uh, call and and looking at it. So, you know, there's several options with Here the Watchman that you have. We just released a, a conference that was delayed because I got COVID and some other of our speakers for this thing got COVID. Uh, but it's, a, it's an on-demand conference that you own. It's not a rental. You own it. You can download it. You can share it with your friends. Uh, it's called the Remnant Revolution. And if you scroll down below all the things about Eyes to See on our website at hearthewatchmanmen.com, you'll see the graphics for it there. Just click on those graphics and you can sign up for it and uh, and go with it. It's it's. It's people love it. It has 11 original presentations, one of which is Derek. Uh, and then it's got, I think, 15 or 15 or so of the best of presentations oh, in the okay. bonus section. So you'll see Derek again down there, <laughs> uh, unless unless Vimeo censors him, which I don't know. He's like on the Vimeo uh, <laughs> hit list. Yeah, I, I got that one, uh, your conference that, uh, that uh, fall uh, kind of <laughs> totally uh, totally spiked off of Vimeo. Uh, well, you know, it's funny, yeah. Derek. I was looking at yeah, I'm just so I'm such a such a hater. I'm, I'm so controversial, I know, you know. <laughs> it, it's all <laughs> idle, brother. You know, I tell you, that's how they nail you on all this stuff is your title. You know, you can't put the truth in the title. Mm -hmm, Let's just say. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, this, this that, that it kind of speaks to the 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 bigger issue here, which is spiritual warfare, and and some of the conferences that we've been at have been. Um, really interesting in, in, in ways that to perhaps you didn't plan. What was the most, um, without, you know, throwing anybody under the bus or anything like that, but just uh, some of the examples of the type of spiritual warfare that manifest at a gathering like Here the Watchman? Well, it's there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's definitely there. I think, I think one of the, uh, one of the things that's, sticks in my mind is when we did the, in Long Island, New York, mm -hmm. we did a spiritual warfare training with Russ and Shelley Dizdar, God bless them, you know, and, uh, and they came out and, and all of a sudden there was a girl there and it was manifesting in her and she was going crazy and, and talking in tongue and screaming and crying and on the floor, you know, and, uh, and uh, Shelly Dizdar went up to her and said, come on with me, real sternly, and took her out. And and uh, we went on with the conference. I ran into Shelly later, and I said, hey, how's that woman doing? She said, oh, she's fine. We talked to her. She's all good now. you know." And, and they, Tom Dunn's the same way, has such a gift at working with that because it, it rears its ugly head. The very If you remember, <laughs> the, the very first one we did, there in, in Dallas in 2016. We had almost a thousand people uh, at that conference because it was the first conference. I mean, nobody was doing them then. And uh, there was one gentleman who was a speaker until we fired him uh, who uh, we had issues with. And he in turn called the FBI and the Grapevine Police Department and said that uh, there'd be a bomb attack at a certain time, and that there, there would or that one of his followers had a vision that there'd be a bomb at one time, and that there'd be a mass attack with bioweapons, and there'd be people withering on the floors. And I, now, this is my first 
conference. I naively mm. thought when I left the secular world as a commercial real estate developer and went into this, that, wow, this is going to be so cool because everybody will be so nice all the time and they're all Christian, you know. Yeah, you know, I had – this woke me up because we – when we are, when we got to the hotel – the first thing that happened was I looked in the parking lot and they had these towers. The police had put towers in the parking lot. And I said, wow, that's pretty cool. I guess we have great security. Jeannie and I walk in and, and the lady that was from the hotel that we dealt with said, these guys over here want to talk to you. And I walked over there and they, you know, we're all in, in dark suits with white shirts and ties on and you know, they were FBI and they, they wanted to question me about all this. And I'm like, this is the first I've heard of this. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. And it it became a uh, we got through that and it became quite the uh, quite the talk of the conference there with all the attendees when they saw the tower. No doubt. But, you know, there's lots of things that have happened along the way uh, that have been really fun. But the, truly the most rewarding thing for Jeannie and I as organizers is when we can sit back in the back of the room and we'll just hear the roar of people talking and sharing with one another. You guys that speak are wonderful, but what really floats my boat is when I see one Christian connecting with another Christian and sharing with one another their trials and tribulations. That's, that's, that does it for me. It makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, and there is a lot of that there. And again, that's one of the things that Sharon and I find uh, most rewarding as speakers, being able to uh, get involved in uh, those types of conversations at uh, gatherings like uh, Hear the Watchman. Um, so the uh, the speakers who I, I think most of our, our viewers are familiar with, uh, I, I, if, especially if they've been around to Hear the Watchman for any length of time, um, don't really need to dive into, but uh, I, I've got to confess, I'm not really familiar with either Clay Clark or Ohio Brett. What can you tell me about those fellows? Okay, so uh, Ohio Brett is amazing. He is traveling to every state in the United States, sharing the word. He just got a new uh, show. He, he's he's he was a coach, I think, somewhere just like Coach Dave. He mm -hmm. and Coach Dave got together and started an organization to fund good work because they found that there's plenty of money out there to fund bad work. Yeah. And so what they do is they go around and they look for people who are serving the Lord and are trying to motivate people and get people going, and they'll give them a grant to get them off their feet. And they've been very successful at, at raising money. It's a wonderful thing to see. Clay Clark uh, and I don't want to butcher this. Uh, he does a conference series with uh, General Flynn, and uh, he goes around the country, and it's I think it's called the Awaken America Tour. And they have speakers, and they try to get people up. He said uh, Dr. Tenpenny there, Coach Dave, uh, I think Jamie spoke there, um, and he has like all kinds of you know, politicians and, and, you know, people that General Flynn would have contact with. Uh, and they go, they just finished one in Phoenix, Arizona. I think, uh, I don't know where their next one is, but that's what he does full time. He used to have his own business, very successful businessman. And he was called to do this by the Lord. So he does that. It's fascinating to listen to. He is, uh, you can find an interview that I did with him on our YouTube channel. He is he was one of those guys, Derek, that, you know, you, you go to interview him and you don't really have to do anything. You say, so, Clay, tell us about this. And it's done. You're, you can sit back and enjoy the rest of the interview. <laughs> so he's a he's a great guy. I'm really trying if he has the time to get him there in person. Uh, it's all up to his schedule and where he's got to be. So mm. we'll do the best we can with that. But the thing about Hear the Watchman, and you've witnessed this, is we don't pick speakers. First of all, we let God tell us who is going to speak. And, and uh, you know, it, it's a broad collection of opinions and positions. There's pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, you know, speakers. Um, I've had people, I, I had someone very prominent in our circle 
who told me, how dare you put a, a Baptist and a Pentecostal on the same stage together? Uh, and it's <laughs> like, look, I'm just trying to feed the flock. I mean, if you and I go into a buffet, you may love liver and onions, and I hate liver and onions, and I love fish, and you hate fish. Well, when we sit down to eat at the table, we're not going to argue about the benefits of fish and liver. You know, so we try to get people to come. If you're listening to a presentation and it's not what you want to listen to, you just go out and fellowship with people in the hotel. It has a wonderful lobby where people collect. It's got a couple mm -hmm. of nice restaurants there. Oh, yeah. And key, and most importantly, right across the street, you can walk to a Whataburger. So <laughs> what else could you ask for? Right. You know, it's all there. And a good coffee shop in the uh, lobby as well, which is yeah, uh, always, yeah. always critical. Yeah. Too. yeah. yeah. Now, the Hilton DFW Lakes is a great, uh, great facility. One of the things we noticed in the, uh, I think we've been there four times now, is that uh, every time we've come back, it's been pretty much the same staff. And yeah. We noticed in the, in the restaurant, the same staff. Uh, we had that waitress last year, and that, that waiter was here last yep. year. So it's... Uh, Most hey. of the people that work there have worked there for 20 years or longer. Now, yeah. they, lost, they lost some people with the COVID. Sure, time. sure. You know, that, that's going to happen. But... The nice thing, folks, too, is if you're driving and, and you know, you've got, you've got DFW is within driving distance of several states that border Texas, um, is the hotel, it's simple. They don't charge for parking. There's plenty of parking. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are flying in, they have a 24-hour free shuttle and yep. the airport's only 15 minutes away, if that. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, it might even be less than 15, right, Derek? It's, yeah, about you know, that. I mean, it's close. And and so it's we, we it's a great location, easy to get to, plenty of off-site restaurants and stuff for you to go to. And and I'm telling you, you will you will be, you know, standing outside and you'll be thinking like, well, where are we gonna go? And you'll run up and, and someone will come up to you and start talking to you that you've you don't know them, you've never met them, but you will go with them. And now you will have a friend in another part of the country that you'll stay in touch with and and be able to share and know is there. Because look, Derek, you know, I'm, I'm not a date setter. I just know, though, like a lot of us do, that things are going to heat up faster than we ever thought they would. And there may come a time when as we, uh, like Jamie and I are working on these faith havens across the country, you may need a friend that you can stop and stay for the night or camp on their property as you're on your way trying to get somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, there might not be communications. Who knows? But you should at least have that knowledge and know what's there and who's there to help you. Yeah. And, and it it's really uh, eye-opening as we watch what's happening here in the country the last, uh, even the last couple of months. I mean, it's one thing, you, we kind of expected the liberal media and I use that word liberal only because that's the term that we we understand. They're not really liberal at all. Uh, it, they, they've misappropriated the term. Anyway, they, it, it was understandable that they would go after Donald Trump. But the way they've gone after Joe Rogan here in, in recent weeks is startling. And it's mainly because he dared to interview Dr. Robert Malone, who co-invented the uh, mRNA vaccine technique. And uh, he, he transgressed. He, he, he crossed the line as far as the, the, the technocratic overlords are concerned. And uh, you, you've got that on the one hand. And then secondly, this event that took place this past weekend on Friday, when GoFundMe announced it was going to grab like $9 million yeah. that had been raised out of the $10.1 million for the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa. And that they not, not that they were going to refund the money. Well, if you want a refund, you ask for it and we'll send it back to you. But otherwise, we're going to take this $9 million and give it to approved yeah. charities. And, of course, the pushback was so strong that they reversed course pretty quickly, like two in the morning. They put out a, a press. They put out a statement. It's like, oh, OK, we'll, we'll just automatically refund the money. But the idea that they thought they could get away with it is startling. Well, and, and, the re and, and, and the reasons that they gave for doing it, that, uh, you know, this well, we've got word that this protest is violent. And when and today I saw that the uh, the mayor of Ottawa, as we're recording this on Monday, February 7th, the, uh, the mayor of Ottawa is saying it's it's really sad seeing this protest with, like, uh, you know, bounce castles and, and saunas and hot tubs. It's like, whoa, whoa, what? It's only a, a legitimate protest if you're burning down the city, like in Portland or Seattle or Minneapolis? Yeah. And, and yet, and yet, this is what 
the, the left in our world today finds offensive and wants to shut you down and deplatform you. And so these gatherings and the Zoom calls that you're putting together, Mike, are, are a way to get around that, like the faith havens that Jamie Walden is building. Yeah, and you know, Derek, the thing is, you want to hear the truth. That's that's what you want. You, whatever you do with the truth that you hear is up to you, you know, but you want to be able to hear the truth. The Zoom platforms allow allows us to speak the truth. Uh, the conferences allow us to speak the truth. The Largely, the on-demand conferences that we put together allow as much of the truth out there as we can. And I put the truth out there. Sometimes they censor it and I have to go in and re-upload it and change the title and all that. But you know what? That's just, that's part of the game here uh, lately. But I do think, you know, you look at, look at the, as you said, the liberals, uh, you know, look at AOC the other day, uh, went on a tirade about how capitalism doesn't work. You know, and it's like, it's like, there they go again. They Says the young lady who drives it. Socialism young has yeah. never worked. Yeah. It's yeah. never worked, you know. So it says the young lady who lives in a very uh, tony apartment in Washington, D.C. Yeah. and drives a Tesla. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Capitalism doesn't work. I went through that discussion with my stepdaughter once. She was she was going off on, on Jeannie about how we were out of touch with reality and all we thought about was money and capitalism and all that. And then in the next breath, she's given Jeannie, this was when she was in college, she was given Jeannie a list of like the things she needs. Oh, I need earbuds. I need, I need this makeup and that makeup. And uh, you know, I don't have a, you, I don't have enough an allowance, you know, and I looked at Jeannie and I said, I'll tell you how you make her appreciate capitalism. Just cut it all off. And let her handle it herself. And, you know, she'll <laughs> learn real quick. You know, but that's that is largely where we are in America. We, the liberals, what they did, especially with giving away money, you know, is they made the situation worse, not better. I mean, in our town, and I'm sure it's like this in Crane, but every business has a help wanted sign up. And Just, they can't yeah. find people to work. Sure, people right. are saying, you know, people are saying, well, you know, it's not really worth it for me to to get a job at Burger King. That's the only fast food place we have. Uh, they they only pay twelve dollars an hour, and it's like, are you kidding me? Do you know forty hours a week times twelve equals a number? Forty hours a week times zero equals zero. You know, but they just there's no motivation. You know. Uh, and that's happening across the country. I mean, you, you'll see that they, Wall Street and powers that be report that, oh, no, jobs are up and blah, blah, blah. Really? OK, that's all great. But they can't find workers. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and you look at today's news regarding uh, the whole COVID thing, you see that uh, apparently they are not requiring hospitals to uh, report any longer right. the COVID cases or the COVID deaths. Right because they've dropped below a certain number. But don't worry, the CDC is going to track all this and take care of us. Because let's be honest, folks, the CDC has done such a wonderful job with all this. You know, <laughs> let's put them in, in charge of tracking numbers, you know. Uh, so so the insanity of the left to, to try and come up with all of this stuff after seeing time after time, failure after failure, these places where they wanted to defund the police department now begging for money to fund the police department. Right. You know, because, because they realize that these social intervention specialists, when somebody's holding a gun to someone's head, they don't work real good. You know, no. unless you want to throw an Irma Bombeck book at their head or something like that. I don't know, you know, but... It's it's just not working. And so I think the country, Derek, as a whole is turning. I think we're coming back to reality. And I, I talked to a friend of mine and we were talking about the COVID thing. And and he said, look, it's just part of it's it's part of life. It's part of like what we've had to deal with when other things have come along. They scare, they're very scary at first. AIDS. Let's take a look at AIDS. Now you can say, well, yeah, but people get AIDS because of their lifestyle. Well, yeah, OK. But we all survived it. You know, there's medicine now to treat it. And you look at COVID. Yeah. OK, it killed a lot of people. 
you know, maybe, you know, I mean, there were a lot of questions about what the real cause of death was in a lot of these cases. But I think we're at a point, like what he said is, I'm over it. I'm going back on. If I get sick, I get sick. But I'm not going to live in my living room anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm done. And and I think that's that's more and more. I guarantee you in Dallas, they have contractually uh, agreed with us. There'll be no social distance, no masks, no enforcement of any of that sort of stuff. If there even is anything. Currently, there isn't anything, you know. But I have learned to just go with the flow. And I think that's what America is doing is they're going with the flow. They're just saying like, yeah, OK, whatever. You know, I'm still going to Dallas and going to this conference because I need it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, Let's get back to real life. It. And we'll uh, it, that'll be one of the things that uh, you'll, you'll get in Dallas is a discussion of the spiritual forces behind all of the political madness. Because, again, the uh, the, sh- the the political news and the headlines each day, that's just the shadows on the wall of the real conflict that we're all engaged in. The Eyes to See conference coming to Dallas March 17th through 20th of 2022. Here the Watchmen dot com and co-founder of Hear the Watchman, Mike Kerr. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome, Derek. And hey, guys, don't forget when you when you buy your ticket for the conference at Hear the Watchman, uh, use the discount code Gilbert20 and you can save twenty dollars off your admission ticket uh, for the conference. So we'll see you there in Dallas, Texas. All right, Mike, we're looking forward to it. Coming up, other conferences, including one right here in uh, right here in the Ozarks, and uh, we've got dates for our tour of Turkey later this year. That and more as a view from the bunker continues. Driving the Internet to Think. This is A View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. We are online at VFTB.net. That's what we call our global hub for this uh, media enterprise. You'll find us on social media at View from Bunker on Twitter, at Derek Gilbert also on Twitter. The View from the Bunker page at Facebook. Give us a like there or uh, go to one of the new social media sites. We are uh, expanding our reach. Gab, MeWe, Getter, Parlor at Derek P. Gilbert. And, of course, our YouTube channel, which is under my name, youtube.com slash Derek Gilbert. You not only find these uh, interviews, you'll find audio versions of our weekly Bible study, the Gilbert House Fellowship, and more there. A um, couple of things to talk about before we uh, get into some of the other conferences. This week we saw a, a continued ramping up of the uh, rhetoric between the West and Russia. And again, I am just boggled. <laughs> I am gobsmacked. I am flummoxed trying to figure out exactly what is at stake here. Now, I'm old enough to remember the tension between the United States and the old Soviet Union. Yeah, I I was alive before the wall fell in Berlin. And so I have a bit of that memory from my time as a kid growing up when the Soviet Union was the evil empire. I'm not suggesting that Russia and the United States are going to see eye to eye on everything and that we should... um, uh, partner up uh, and just forget, you know, let bygones be bygones. The last hundred years just never really happened. Everything's fine. But I think looking long term at China's rise to prominence, China is uh, on the track to become the world's dominant superpower by the end of this century. And I think it would behoove the Western world, including Russia, to recognize this and partner together rather than driving Russia into China's orbit, which is what we've been doing, especially when it comes to things like um, Ukraine and Georgia. I I will say again, as I've said before, I'm sympathetic to the people of Ukraine. You you look back at their history in the 1930s and the fact that about 7 million people, there's no firm number, but any estimates range from between 3 and 7 million, sometimes as high as 9 million people, starved to death under Stalin in the 1930s, the Holodomor. And forgive my pronunciation, I I know that's not correct, but that is a historic fact that we in the West tend to 
forget. And you, you might remember a fellow by the name of Walter Durante, who won a, a Pulitzer Prize for the New York Times as their Moscow bureau, bureau chief back in the 1930s, denying that there was any kind of uh, starvation, any kind of a famine going on in the Soviet Union. And so it was many years before the truth of this came out. But uh, the fact that 7 million, roughly, Ukrainians died less than 100 years ago for no good reason, for no good reason, you can understand why they would not want to be under the thumb of Russia. But now stepping back and looking at this rationally, what does Russia really want with Ukraine? If, if the West would guarantee Russia that, uh, okay, we're not going to admit Ukraine into NATO and we're not going to base troops and missiles there, that's a good starting point to reaching some common ground with the Kremlin. You know, we would have a problem with uh, China, for example, or Russia forming a military alliance with Mexico or Canada. I mean, we very nearly started World War III over Russian missiles in Cuba back in the early 1960s. So it's really not that unreasonable if you view things from their perspective. They don't want a hostile military force right on its border. Well, (laughs) even though Ukrainian officials have been saying, you know, the threat of a Russian invasion is not imminent, despite what you're hearing from Washington, D.C., Ukrainian officials have basically called the White House and said, hey, could you tone it down, please? You're not helping. And yet Western media dutifully continues to report the uh, press releases handed out by the White House, by the Pentagon, by the State Department. And this this past week was was almost laughable in the difference between the professionalism of Russia's foreign ministry and uh, their colleagues in the U.S. and the U.K. This past week, on Thursday, Sergei Lavrov, who's Russia's foreign minister, he met with Liz Truss, who is the foreign minister for the U.K., and she embarrassed herself. Now, it was a closed-door meeting, but word got out pretty quickly that during the meeting, Lavrov asked Truss if the U.K. accepted that Russia had the right to move troops and equipment into regions, uh, the Voronezh and Rostov regions. And Truss replied that the UK would never recognize Russian sovereignty over those regions. The thing is, those regions are on the Russian side of the border. They're inside the internationally recognized boundaries, borders of Russia. They are not now, nor have they ever been, part of Ukraine. And Truss, as the UK foreign minister, should have known that. Well, the foreign ministry later had to issue a statement clarifying what uh, what Truss meant. She apparently thought that Lavrov was referring to Donetsk and Luhansk, the two contested regions of the Donbass. But uh, again, she should have known this. And this comes after she confused the Baltic Sea and the Black Sea back in February, earlier in February. So um, you know, again, if you're going to take over as the foreign minister of a world power like Great Britain, the United Kingdom, you really ought to know what you're talking about when you go into a meeting with your your colleagues. Uh, Meanwhile, United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken said again on Friday that Russia could invade Ukraine any day now. In fact, this weekend, as of this recording, word has gone out that uh, we basically told, by we, I mean the American government has told all Americans in Ukraine to get out because uh, if you're caught when Russia invades, we're not going to send soldiers in to get you out. And that Russia could invade during the Winter Olympics might happen as early as Wednesday. Now, as with that earlier press conference, I think I talked about this last week. If not, I should have. The uh, interesting confrontation between State Department spokesman Ned Price and uh, Matt Lee, veteran reporter for Associated Press, where Price made a similar statement that Russia could invade at any minute And Lee said, okay, what's your evidence for this? And Price's response was, well, I just gave it to you. Well, where was it? I mean, I did, well, I just told you. And and Lee, to his credit, kept pressing the issue. It led to a very testy five-minute confrontation where Lee said, no, you didn't give us any evidence. You just told us Russia's going to do this. On what are you basing that statement? Well, I just told you. And Price finally finally just said, well, look, if you're going to believe the Russian government over your own, which really uh, offended Lee based on his response. Anyway, that's the level that we're dealing with here in um, Washington, D.C. And uh, uh, Lee didn't, or rather, uh, Secretary Blinken didn't provide any more evidence than Ned Price, the spokesperson, did uh, during that conference week before last. So um, 
what what is what is going on here? This feels a lot like the run up to the first Gulf War, and then the invasion of Iraq. It, it just feels like in 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 two thousand three. It just feels like the same thing all over again. We're getting these declarations from the American government that uh, Russia is about to do this, and boy, something could happen any minute now. Well, it looks like it could happen as early as next Wednesday. And just watch, something may happen this week that will trigger a conflict that will give the United States justification to say, oh, okay, we're, we didn't want to do this, but we're going to, Russia just forced our hand. Pray that that doesn't happen because every time our experts in DC, the think tanks run war game simulations in Eastern Europe, simulating what would happen if Russia actually did roll tanks, soldiers, equipment into Eastern Europe. The United States, the NATO forces, lose every single time they run this simulation. We don't have the forces there. We don't have the supply chain, the logistics to successfully defend against a ground invasion. So what happens then? If Russia does roll into Eastern Europe and we can't stop them with conventional forces, Well, you got to think that there's a possibility that in order to preserve our credibility as the world's leading superpower, somebody is going to authorize the use of tactical nuclear weapons. I say again, pray that this doesn't happen. I'm just thinking out loud here. I don't have any inside sources that are telling me that this is what would happen. I just, when you get a bunch of testosterone-fueled guys in a room, and it's like, well, okay, we're, we're about to lose here. We can't lose face with the world. It'll, it'll damage our credibility. We're just going to have to launch. Pray that that doesn't happen. Because, uh, again, uh, empathize with the people of Ukraine. I don't want to see us go to war with another nuclear power defending Ukraine because there really is no national interest for the United States in doing so. There just isn't. Now, look, trying to look at this from the, the Russian standpoint, and I'm not an expert in geopolitics, but it seems to me that what Russia really wants out of this more than anything else is just a land bridge between its territory and the Crimea. And um, I, I don't think Russia really wants to take over Ukraine because Ukraine's economy is not really going to be of any benefit to Russia. You're basically taking on a sick nation and... Um, going to drain more resources from your country than you would gain by absorbing it back into a reconstituted Soviet Union. I think those claims coming from the U.S. and the U.K. that Putin wants to reconstitute the Soviet Union, I think that's projecting. I don't think Putin really wants to do that. I think he's smart enough to know that uh, as long as he's got a buffer between Russia's territory and NATO, he's fine with that. He's got it with Belarus. He's got a friendly uh, ally there in Lukashenko. Uh, Ukraine, not so much. He had it when... um, The previous prime minister was there, who we ran out through a Western-sponsored color revolution. So you can see why Putin may be just a bit edgy about um, any kind of assurances or promises that uh, the United States offers. It's not well known, but um, when the Berlin Wall fell, when the Soviet Union dissolved, uh, NATO promised Mikhail Gorbachev that... uh, it would not expand and uh, allow former Soviet na- nations into NATO, like the Baltic nations, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, and Poland. And uh, then we did. And when the Russians complained, the response from NATO was, well, you should have got it in writing. So I-, I know there's a tendency for people who grew up in my era to see Russia as the bad guys and uh, us as the good guys, but... Um, I don't know. History is a little more nuanced than that. Uh, and one odd, one more odd thing. Apparently, a viral sensation on uh, the web. Uh, young, attractive Ukrainian women, f- fully made up, uh, wearing fatigues, are going viral on TikTok. Apparently, these are we're supposed to believe that these are the uh, defenders of Ukraine. If and when Russia rolls in, these uh, very attractive young Ukrainian women in fatigues and heels are going to defend Ukraine. I, uh, um, I'm sorry. The, the, one, of the, one of the images showed a, a manicured hand with perfect nails holding a bunch of ammunition. That is a hand that has never held a gun. I don't think this is going to keep uh, Vladimir Putin awake at night. Uh, the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa, um, boy, a development this week. After um, GoFundMe 
tried to seize $10 million and uh, created a backlash against that uh, crowdfunding platform. People just basically accusing them of theft. Uh, GoFundMe said at first they were going to take uh, about nine of the $10 million. And uh, if people wanted their money back, they could ask for it. Otherwise, they were going to redistribute the money to more worthwhile charities. It's like, uh, <laughs> how is that not a bait and switch? Well, it is a bait and switch. And, and uh, after the internet blew up at GoFundMe, they said, okay, we'll, we'll refund all of the money. Well, then new campaigns started on a Christian crowdfunding site called Give, Send, Go. And Give, Send, Go raised about $9 million as of late last week. Uh, and then suddenly a uh, superior court in Ontario, the Canadian Superior Court of Justice, issued an order halting access to those funds. It's not clear to me how a Canadian court can uh, dictate to an American firm, give, send, go, but uh, this is what they're trying to do. I think that Canadian officials are basically hearing from other Western governments saying, look, you got to get this under control because it's inspiring other protests elsewhere. A freedom convoy converging on Paris, others in uh, announced in New Zealand, Australia, so uh, I think uh, Justin Trudeau's catching some heat from other government. You're, you're making us look bad because you're, this is inspiring people in our country to do what your people are doing. So get this under control. We'll see. This, this may be a crucial week for um, the protest because it's not just in Ottawa anymore. Border crossings in Alberta, Manitoba, and uh, Ontario. The Windsor-Detroit uh, uh, Ambassador Bridge is uh, also blocked. And I understand that about a quarter of the uh, trade between the U.S. and Canada comes across that bridge. So that's uh, costing millions of dollars per day that that bridge is uh, is closed. Um, so just just a lot of a lot of things happening around the world that uh, just require our prayer. And uh, as Christians, we just need to remember that uh, in all of this, our mission is not changed, and that is to make disciples of all nations. It's very easy to get caught up in all of this political stuff and focus on that and how to fix those things. And, you know, I'll, I'll say, as I've said before, that it's not that politics is unimportant because that's how our daily lives are governed, but um, we're, we're playing a longer game, or at least we should be, if we take the Great Commission seriously. So be active, especially at the local level, where we still have control over um, a lot of things that affect our daily lives. And I, you know, I say this as one who is not active in local politics, but it seems to me that if there is a calling, if you feel led to get involved in politics, perhaps getting involved in the local school board or county commission would be more effective in your area than campaigning for the next president of the United States. Just a thought. Again, I'm not leading by example on that one. Um, politics. By, by nature, despite the fact that I sit in front of a camera five or six days a week, I am more introverted. For me, for Sharon, a fun Friday night is sitting and watching a documentary. Finding a new paper on ancient Mesopotamian cosmology. That's, that's a fun Friday or Saturday night for us. One of the most uncomfortable things I ever had to do was make the transition from inside sales, where I just talked on a telephone, to outside sales. Spent four years calling on eight to 12 people a day, four days a week. That really pushed me out of my comfort zone. Standing in front of a group at a podium or on a stage or in front of a, it's different. It's different. It's more like teaching rather than interacting. And that's really difficult for me. But uh, if that's your calling, if that is your gift, then, then consider local politics, local school board county commission, mayor of your town, something like that, where, again, at the local level, we still have some control. Understanding that what we're doing is simply buying time, buying time as this world continues to grow dark until our true Savior arrives to put everything right. So, some conferences coming up. We've got one here in the Ozarks just a few weeks away. This will be the first weekend in March as Sharon and I will be teaching all weekend at His Call Ministries. This is at the Finley River Ranch in Sparta, Missouri. It's a beautiful setting. This will be kind of an intimate gathering. They've got room for maybe 100 people. So more of an opportunity for us to meet with you and talk with you face to face. Um, that kind of setting is actually energizing because it's getting together with folks who understand that there's more going on in this world than most of us are hearing. And so we'll be talking about um, 
my new book, The Return of Saturn, but in a broader context, how it fits into uh, prophecy. The Return of Saturn and the Great Reset is what we're calling this uh, this weekend. And uh, the irony of this, of course, is that uh, God himself has a greater reset. In fact, the ultimate reset that is eventually coming. So we'll be, we'll be talking about that and uh, messaging from the media, things like that. It's Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday morning, March 4th through 7th. You can find out more online, hiscallministries.com. Uh, we've been there a couple of times now. Um, really have gotten to, well, love uh, Alec and Ginny Wade, Joyce Stevenson, who coordinates the events there, hiscallministries.com. Now, uh, we talked about the Hear the Watchman conference, Eyes to See, March 18th through 20th. Please remember, save $20 using promo code GILBERT20, GILBERT20, and we hope we see you in Dallas. Uh, Skywatch TV, getting ready to announce a, a new virtual conference. This is the uh, the unveiling. This will be a virtual conference, a virtual conference that will launch May 13th. It'll be available for 90 days. Uh, more details on that coming in the days ahead, but uh, some of the speakers will be new to us this time around, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Then in uh, also in May, the following weekend, the Prophecy Watchers Homeward Bound Conference. This will be in uh, Colorado Springs, the Colorado Springs Marriott, and Sharon and I honored to uh, be a part of this gathering. We're looking forward to it. Uh, what a great crew. Ellie Marzulli, uh, Billy Crone, Ken Johnson, Ryan Peterson, um, Dr. Tommy Ice, uh, Dr. Randall Price talking some archaeology. Josh Peck will be there with us. Uh, Brent Miller Sr., Brent Miller Jr., Doug Woodward. Uh, just a great group. You can find out more online at Hear the Watchmen. I'm sorry, it's uh, prophecywatchers.com. Prophecywatchers.com. Late July, the Go Therefore conference in uh, Brookville, Ohio. That's just outside Dayton. Uh, that'll be at the Harvest Revival Center July 29th through 31st. But uh, more details on that still to come. And uh, our tour of Turkey. Skywatch TV's tour of Turkey. Uh, we've got dates for that now. We're still uh, setting up the webpage and all, but uh, if you want to mark it on your calendar, just in case you're interested, because this will be a small group. We're looking at a maximum of about two dozen people uh, touring the uh, the churches of Revelation, Gobekli Tepe, uh, Arslan Tepe, which is uh, a site where the kingdom of Nimrod, Uruk, was replaced by the kingdom of, um, or, or well, a culture called the Kura Araxis civilization. They were the proto Hurrians, and I explain in my book, The uh, Second Coming of Saturn, why the Hurrians are so important in terms of biblical history. Um, Mount Nimrod, which has got some amazing uh, idols that uh, were, were put up there. Uh, the caves of Cappadocia, the, the underground cities of Cappadocia. In fact, one of the hotels we'll be in for several nights uh, will be in those caves. So some really amazing stuff. The dates, October 19th through November 2nd. Those are the dates, October 19th through November 2nd of 2022. If you're interested, drop me an email, Derek at GilbertHouse.org, Derek at GilbertHouse.org, and we'll uh, send you information as soon as the website is up with all of the official details. And then the tour of Israel next spring for Skywatch TV. This will be with our colleagues from the uh, from Skywatch TV, Donna Howell and Allie Henson, and Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, March 19th through 30th of 2023, with an optional three-day extension in Jordan. Uh sites on this tour that uh, other tours in Israel just don't see, like uh, Shiloh, uh, Joshua's Altar, uh, Gilgal Rephaim, as, uh, along with all the sites that you want to see, like Nazareth and uh, the Jordan River, the Sea of Galilee, Jerusalem, of course, and uh, we pray that we'll be able to ascend to the Temple Mount like we did last time. That is a uh, uh, that is a remarkable, life-changing experience. The three-day extension to Jordan, uh, Petra, Mount Nebo, and uh, other sites as well, the Red Desert of Wadi Rum. Find a sample itinerary and a breakdown of costs online. You can reserve your place there as well at skywatchinisrael.com, skywatchinisrael.com. Thank you for taking time to listen or watch wherever it happens to be, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Amazon Music, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, wherever fine podcasts are sold. Give us a like or a review if you get a spare moment, and uh, give us a like at Facebook as well. Our announcer is DC Good. And a view from the bunkers of production of Gilbert House, released under Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, and 4.0 international license. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is a view from the bunker. <laughs>